Hey everyone, Mike here. Today I'm gonna to be responding to a comment by Umer on my NSXT Edge video. Specifically, Umer said, please do videos on how does DNS, NAT, etc. services work in NSXT and what scenario do we use those services from NSXT? This is actually a great question and I realized I didn't really cover this at all in my NSXT from scratch series. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. So I'm gonna spend this video addressing the DNS part. How does DNS work in NSXT? Are there any special considerations, that kind of thing? Uh, so there's a few scenarios I'm gonna walk you guys through. The first one is you're doing VLAN backed workloads. And this is kind of where we have this VM, it's connected up to an NSXT VLAN backed segment, that's a key part. And in this case, that's on VLAN 20. And then somehow that host that has a VM on it is connected to a physical network. And ultimately there's a DNS server on that network somewhere. We don't really care about the specifics because that's on the physical network. All we care about is that we can route to that DNS and then it can route back. In this scenario, there's no specific configuration required from an NSXT standpoint. This will just work out of the box. The only thing you really need is to make sure that this VM has the proper DNS IP and then make sure that you can route appropriately both to the DNS server and that you can route back to whatever this segment is, which you should be fine because with a VLAN back segment, this VLAN exists on the physical network. That scenario is pretty cut and dry. Again, nothing out of the box there. Scenario number two is where we have a VM on an overlay network. So this looks mostly the same. We have a VM, we give it an IP. It's connected to an overlay segment. We'll name it web. And that ultimately routes up to an NSXT edge VM. Uh, and then ultimately it, it hits a physical network and we have a DNS server sitting on the other side of that. This is basically the same as the first scenario. The only difference is, of course is that we're routing through a distributed router and through our NSXT edge everything really stays the same. Basically, we just need to make sure that we can route from this IP over to the DNS server, and then we can route back. That's the biggest thing that gets most people with this. Again, no special DNS configuration required here. This is just IP routing. So no, nothing needed to from an NSXT standpoint. Now, let me give you guys kind of a look into my lab, and we'll kind of make this real. So here I've got vCenter, and I've got two VMs. I've got VM Blue and I've got VM pink. If we look at VM blue, we see that it's on web-seg. So this is the overlay segment. Uh, and then if we look at VM pink, we see it's on home seg VLAN 850. This is a VLAN back segment. So let's first look at VM pink while we're there. So this is the first scenario I just described. And we'll see here that we have, let's look at the DNS config on this. So we're pointing to a bare metal DNS server that I have in my physical environment. This is not under NSXT control. Uh, it's not a VM or anything like that. It's literally outside of the NSXT environment completely. Now, from a routing standpoint, I'll just show you guys kind of the IP. This subnet exists on my physical network. So I just place this VM essentially on VLAN 850, which is the same way regardless whether I'm doing NSXT or not. It's just a port group, basically. The only consideration really here is just making sure I can ping the DNS server. If I can, and assuming I've configured my VM appropriately, I should be able to resolve URLs. So let's try VMware.com. We're gonna see if we can pull a page, and we can. So by doing the curl command, I was proving that I can actually resolve it through that DNS server. All this is is routing. So I basically set it up on the VLAN. That VLAN again exists on my physical network, no big deal. Again, out of the box, nothing special here. If we go to VM Blue, this is the one that was on the overlay network. Just to prove that, if we do IPA, you see it has this 10200 IP. This does not exist on my physical network. This is 100% an overlay network, and I believe I'm actually natting within NSXT for this IP too. Um, and that doesn't really matter. The point is, somehow this has to be able to reach or ping the DNS server wherever that is. Let's check what the DNS setting is in this one. Okay, it's the same server, so this is the same story. In this case, all I really care about, it's a little more involved because I need to make sure that routing works between the two and that involves things like route redistribution, making sure I'm advertising the proper route from the T1, uh, making sure my NAT is set up properly, all of that comes into play, but there's nothing from a DNS standpoint that you need to do in NSXT. Now there is a third scenario, let me pull up my slides again for you guys. And this scenario is a little bit more interesting. This is the only one where you would really need to do something in NSXT, and it's called DNS forwarding. So basically you have a VM, it's on an overlay network again in this example. We have this NSXT edge. We create what's called a DNS service IP, 
and that IP right here is 10 200 254 254. This IP will basically represent the DNS server from the VM standpoint. So what that means is if you go into the VM itself, you would point its DNS entry or its name server to this IP right here. And what that allows you to do is have more than one DNS server and you can actually do what's called conditional forwarding. So you can say things like, uh, for example, this 172.16.251 DNS server is in my home lab. I own that DNS, so I have all the entries in that, and I use a, a an FQDN or a domain that I call home.lab. But let's say I want all of the requests for home.lab to be sent to this DNS, but I want everything else, like Google and VMware.com or whatever, right? I want that to go to this DNS, 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. If I wanted to do this scenario, I would set up what's called DNS forwarding in NSXT. And again, the way it works basically is we point our DNS to the NSXT edge, to this IP that we configure there, and I'll do a tutorial on how to set this up. Um, and then ultimately, basically that's going to split off DNS requests as needed, wherever it needs to go. It's just going to relay the request basically. So again, scenarios one, two, you don't need to do anything special from a DNS from a DNS standpoint. I can't talk today. That happens every video, guys. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, scenario three, if you want to do conditional forwarding and split off your DNS requests to different places, NSXT can do that. That would be called DNS forwarding. I'll actually drop a link to the documentation if you're interested in playing with it. And if there is interest, I'd be happy to do a video on that as well. So thank you guys for your time. I hope everyone's staying safe and healthy. Take care.